this beautiful concept of faith. Faith, he makes it very clear, is things which are hoped for and not seen. So, if you look at this concept of faith, uh, in the Kirtland era of church history, Joseph Smith, Sidney Rigdon, and other leaders of the church, they they put together and, and authorized and used some lectures, seven lectures on faith that they would give to the uh, to the elders of the church before they would send them out on their missions. So that was their their mission training experience was to go through the lectures on faith. In the lectures on faith, we read that faith is this grand governing principle. It it underlies every action we make. We wouldn't do anything if it isn't driven by faith. Now, here's the critical point. Faith, all by itself, drives all of our action, but the faith we're talking about that really matters, that leads to actions that, that eternally are significant, is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's faith in God. That's faith that leads to life and salvation, and in the lectures on faith, the, the majority of the, the time is spent on teaching what do you have to do to get to that kind of faith where it leads to life and salvation. And there are three elements that those lectures lay out that you have to have. Number one, you have to have an idea that God exists. This is interesting because if you stop and think about how God does this in the history of time, he doesn't stay veiled and cloaked behind that veil forever indefinitely and hope that somebody's going to figure out that there's a higher being, that there's a creator, that there's somebody who's, who's sustaining life. He opens the veil, reveals himself to chosen vessels, special witnesses, closes the veil, now they go and preach. They spread the idea that God exists, allowing the Holy Ghost an opportunity to touch people's hearts. But that's not good enough. That's step one. You can't really have faith in God unto life and salvation if all you say is, yeah, I think there's a higher be I, I believe there's a higher being up there. So the lectures on faith go on to say you have to have a correct idea. Notice it's not just an idea. It has to be rooted in truth, a correct idea of God's attributes, his characteristics, put that one here, and his perfections. You have to know what kind of a being he is in order to really have faith in him. If we believed in a god that was like Jupiter or Zeus, I, I don't know that we would want to go and spend eternity with those kinds of beings, but when we know that God is a god of creation, a god of love, a god of mercy, a god of power, a god of knowledge, that he doesn't change, that he's not a respecter of persons, that he's a god of justice, fairness is it, eternal justice is part of his attributes, he's a god of judgment, then when we get all of his attributes, characteristics, and perfections, a correct idea of them, we can begin to exercise more faith. We can let go of some anxiety and fear that we have and put that at the, at the feet of the Lord and move forward in faith that he's going to take care of all these things. He, he knows what he's doing and he's all-powerful and all-knowing and all-loving. He, he, he knows what he's doing here. That's not enough, according to the lectures on faith. To finish it off, you have to have eventually – notice we've gone from an idea to a correct idea to a knowledge that the course in my life, the course of my life, what I'm doing with my life is in accordance with God's will. That 
what I am doing is what God wants me to do, that I'm moving forward on the covenant path, I'm pleasing to God. According to lectures on faith, with all three of those in, in place and growing and developing over a lifetime, you're not born with faith, most of us. You, you have to grow into this and exercise it like a muscle, and it, it might have some times in life where it ebbs and others where it flows, and we, we have to keep working at this, but this is within the capacity of all of us to get to this level of faith in Christ unto life and salvation. And you'll notice we live in a world that says, show me, then I'll believe, predominantly not everyone, not everywhere, I get that, but predominantly it's this, it's the skeptical, sit back, wait until something is proven before I'll then engage. Um, it's the, it's the idea of if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Those are Jesus' own words saying, if, if you want to know if something's of God, I've, I've taught you, then do it, live it, take the leap of faith, and you're going to discover some things about yourself and about God in the doing of these things, and then after you do them, then you're going to uh, receive the witness after the trial of your faith, not before. <laughs>